Hey there, IBGR and online friends. We are about to kick off today's episode, episode nine of the new generation leader, Rewriting Leadership. There's a lot we're going to get into. We're broadcasting live on IBGR and across the internet on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So I invite you to join in. Show kicks off in about two minutes. We'll see you soon. Have you ever worked for a leader and said, if I ever get into a leadership role, surely I'm not going to lead like they do? Our self-centered individualistic worldview drives a selfish perspective on leadership. What's in it for me pushes leaders to make decisions that benefit themselves, but don't empower their team to bring their best. Today in episode nine on The New Generation Leader, we're talking about rewriting leadership and how to take your business to the next level. This season, we're unpacking the tools you need to effectively connect and collaborate with your team. Ready to build your personal toolbox? All that and more right now on The New Generation Leader on IBGR, Profit Radio to start, grow, and exit your business. You are listening to the IBGR Network, International Business Growth Radio Network. We are live across North America and around the world. Good afternoon, Nassau. This is Thursday, December 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm Aaron Lee, your host here on The New Generation Leader, and welcome to today's episode. If this is your first time listening to IBGR, I want to welcome you. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. Uh, I want to make sure that you know that you can jump into the conversation today throughout the show. There are a few ways you can do that. Go to ibgr.network, click that big blinking question mark, and your question can be live uh, on the air. We'll include that in the conversation here today. But I also want to encourage you to join the conversation at IBGR Network is our social media handle on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. You can find us wherever you spend your time on social media. Jump into the conversation and be part of the community. We are truly more than just a radio station. We are a network. So rewriting leadership. If there was ever a time for us to flip leadership on its head, to turn the world upside down based on how we lead, it would be right now in 2020, right? There is so much opportunity, and that's what we're going to talk about today. How can you put together a toolbox Put the tools together so that you can lead and be the leader that the digital world needs you to be. I don't know about you, but I have watched how quickly the world has changed around us coming up into this year. But boy, oh boy, walking through 2020, 
if we had any doubts, any doubt whatsoever, whether or not the world had changed based on technology and the digital landscape in front of us, well, it certainly has. And so now we have an opportunity. We have a the ability to take a look at what's going on around us. You know, I had this thought a number of years ago in a, an organization I was working in. I would collaborate and quite frankly, commiserate with our director of marketing. And she and I used to joke that we could write a book on how to lead based on the poor leadership experiences we had watched. And, and truly, that was a conversation that began turning my mindset, helping me reframe and shape what the next decade plus of my life would be, what's gotten me to where I am today in the work I'm doing in people strategy consulting, helping leaders transform their businesses, because truly, we can do this uh, in a new way in a way like we never have before. And there's a great opportunity in front of us. So that one conversation started me on this quest. And what I realized in that role and in numerous roles since, I had the great opportunity to collaborate and connect with a number of partner organizations across sectors, business, government, nonprofits. And everywhere I looked, I saw leaders at the front of institutions, of businesses, of organizations who had a vision that could change the world, and yet they weren't. And so as I started to reflect on that and ask myself, what is going on here? What's happening with these teams, these leaders, these organizations? Why are they not reaching their true mission potential? The vision of their organization, why are they not taking it to the next level. Well, as we think about this today in rewriting leadership, that's where I kick off in the new generation leader. And, you know, FedEx gave me a great gift today. Uh, I am holding in my hands the very first printed copy of the new generation leader. Haven't opened it yet. I'm going to do that with my family a little later on this afternoon once the kids are out of virtual school for the day. But boy, oh boy, I can't wait for this book to get into the hands of leaders to think about how we rewrite leadership, build your toolkit, your toolbox to become the kind of leader the digital world needs you to be. As we think about our leadership, the organizations, the businesses that we're leading, we take a look at a, a few different ingredients of our businesses. We think about the meaning, not only of our business, but of our work. How, how do we bring out, how do we draw out the true motivating uh, meaning of what we do? How do we awaken that potential that's truly in every one of us, but not just in every one of us as leaders, that potential is in every one of our team members. And then we take a look at our, our mission. Our mission, uh, our drive, our purpose. What is it that's motivating us to get out of bed every morning? One of my friends, James Lee, is a, a media guru, one of my favorite storytellers, digital storytellers. And he has been posting questions to his community here uh, over the past few days. And he just posted the question. He's talking about the intersection of what you're good at, what you love, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. And his question today is, why do you show up to work? What motivates you? What is that personal mission and drive that's getting you out of bed in the morning? And one of the most powerful experiences for leaders is for us to awaken that mission, that potential, that drive within our team members. What gets them out of bed in the morning? 
How can we tap into that potential? How can we help them live a better story about their own true potential? And the last piece is, is that growth, not only our own personal growth, but the growth of the entire business and not just the growth of the entire business within the existing constructs of the business, but the growth of the business beyond the existing footprint of our business. As we think about that growth, this really epitomizes one of the questions that we have to ask. We have to ask ourselves, what kind of leader do I want to be? Am I a leader who's trying to elevate and promote myself? What I do, what I'm driven to? Am I trying to push, push, push my own perspective? Or perhaps on the flip side, we're so focused on other people that we're not focused on ourselves. Truly in, in the middle there is a middle ground where we are driven, we are passionate, we know our meaning, we know our mission, we're pursuing growth. And at the next level, we are also pursuing that in others. We are equipping, we are empowering, we are calling up the next level of leader out of our organization, out of our business, out of our teams, out of the people who we are walking side by side with every day. There is such great potential in all of us. If we can tap into that, that will help our organizations reach an even greater potential, take things to the next level. And here's, here's what happens. There's, there's this question that keeps being asked around leadership, culture, people circles. What happens if you invest in your people and they leave? And the flip side to that question is, what happens if you don't invest in your people and they stay? As we think about rewriting leadership and what we want leaders within our organization to be and what we want them to become, if we can invite them to their true potential, if we can invite them to the next level, even if they leave us and start their own business or move to another business, the investment that we make in them will not be forgotten. They will never forget you and their influence. And that's where we shift from a mindset of addition or subtraction to a mindset of multiplication. How do we multiply ourselves? Multiply the meaning and the mission that we have how do we multiply that into the growth that not only benefits ourselves, but benefits everyone we come in contact with? That kind of influence as a leader will take everything you do to the next level. It completely changes the conversation. So as we continue on the show today, as we come back after a short break, we're going to look at a few tools that help us get a, a visual picture. And I invite you to go to ibgr.network, download the show notes, and you'll have a link to our, our toolkit that we use as, uh, as we build new generation leaders. We want you to have those tools so you can lead and become the leader that the digital world needs you to be. So rewriting leadership, we're coming back here after a short break on IBGR. Thanks for listening today. We'll be right back. Do you know most teams function at less than 60% of their true potential? How much does this cost your business every year? For every team within your business, it's at least $200,000 in lost revenue. How do you solve this challenge? With Invincible Teams, you can. Measuring the five key building blocks of high-performing teams, we immediately know where to start to take your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com IBGR. 
After working with some of the largest organizations in the world and thousands of small businesses in 116 different countries, we realize that all organizations share one thing in common. They all want to unlock the potential of people. They want everyone to be productive and empowered. They want their teams to perform at the highest levels while creating an amazing culture. They want to impact the lives of their customers. At Giant, we want what you want. We've discovered the science behind unlocking people, and that's why world-class brands trust us. We unlock organizations by implementing the Invincible Operating System. The Invincible Operating System begins with an assessment, so we can understand the current reality of your teams and where the growth opportunities are. Then we use our toolkit to go beyond teaching to true transformation. Our tools are memorable, practical, and profound. Lastly, we follow a process that allows us to effectively touch everyone in the organization with the right experience at the right time, so everyone from key leaders to team members can be fully unlocked. Are you ready to take your organization to the next level? Are you ready to become invincible? Most teams function at less than 60% of their potential, which costs you in lost revenue. The Invincible Teams Assessment tracks the five factors of Invincible Teams and takes your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR. Well, technical glitches galore. Welcome back to the new generation leader on IBGR. Thanks for joining today's show on rewriting leadership. This is episode nine in our people lane at IBGR.network, rewriting leadership. Uh, make sure you go to our website, jump into the conversation. We are broadcasting across the world in four market segments, 24 hours a day. And each day that we're broadcasting is a different lane, a different focus. And so as you jump into the community, as you jump into uh, what we've got, uh, the different shows all across the globe, we are going to share with you insights into people, into finance, into marketing, into operations. And Friday is our focus on entrepreneurship. Great way for you to add voices of influence into how you are leading and growing your business, how you are taking your business to the next level. And today on The New Generation Leader, we're talking about building a new framework for you to think about leadership. We are rewriting leadership. And one of the key hallmarks of our New Generation Leader framework, how we are thinking about leadership in the world that we are in, in this rapidly changing, fast-paced digital world, we are talking about our inner circle. And that inner circle has a powerful influence on you, giving you voice and perspective, adding some uh, insight that you might not miss. We'll talk about that a little bit more in, in the last segment today on the show. But as we come back from our first break, 
I want us to take a look at a few different tools. And as we think about these tools, they help us to have a framework, a new way of thinking about, a new way of reflecting on how we show up as leaders. And the first one is the leader mindset. What's your mindset when you come into leadership, when you step into a leadership role or an opportunity to lead someone else? This may be a, a formal leadership designation that you have leadership over someone based on a role, or it may be simply a leadership of influence. As you look at uh, how you show up, here's the leader mindset that we want to elevate and celebrate. Liberating leaders fight for the highest possible good of those they lead. Fighting for the highest possible good. We talked about that at the outset, that everyone you lead, everyone you come into contact with in your business has their own potential. And one of the great opportunities for you as a leader is to unpack that potential in them. Truth be told, it may not benefit you or your business or your organization. It may not benefit you personally in any way immediately. But there are longstanding legacy influence outcomes that will come from how you invest, how you multiply yourself into the people around you. And how you fight for, for people we're not fighting against them. We're fighting for them. We're doing everything that we need to do. Calibrating support and challenge, encouraging them when they need encouragement, raising the bar when they need the bar raised. All of these ingredients help us to have a new perspective. Help everyone we lead be able to take their, their own work to the next level. So what is your mindset? What is your mindset as a leader? Are you fighting for the highest possible good in the lives of those you lead? Or maybe are you fighting for your highest possible good in the lives of others? That's a question you have to ask yourself is what, what are we in this for? And as we fight for people, we, we start to identify what specific support and challenge do they need from us? What encouragement, what motivation? How can I raise someone up, giving them the tools, the resources, the mindset to take things to the next level? Have I been clear? We'll talk more about clarity next week on the show. But am I being clear in my expectations? Do they know the role that I need them to play on the team? And what tendency or pattern from their background, their history, their habits, their rhythms, what piece of that is undermining the influence that they have with someone else? How can I hold up a mirror and help them see how the choice that they are making day in and day out is affecting that influence? And how do I help these people around me get to the next level? If I can help someone around me get to the next level, then I am truly being successful. Perhaps, perhaps I am helping them get to the next level so that they can continue to fill a role and join our team at the next level. A number of times I've seen this where one of our clients will focus intensely on developing a leader, helping them gain the tools that they need so that they can lead well at the next level. And they rise through the ranks and they're prepared for the opportunity to come. Maybe, maybe it doesn't work out like that. Maybe there's not a way up. You know, I often quote this statistic from last year that half of top performers in organizations left their roles last year. They left the organization that they were in. A number of factors there, 
but there's not always a step up internal within your organization. But if you are truly investing and fighting for someone's highest possible good, you might see that their greatest potential is best served somewhere else. Or that truly the skills, the traits, the abilities, the influence that you have on them and motivating them to the next level awakens in them or shines a light in their own personal sense of meaning and mission in the world. And they realize that they would have far more impact somewhere else. You realize that they would have far more impact somewhere else. There's a great opportunity for you to invest in your people, to celebrate them, to call them up. And that's one of our second, our second tool in this segment I want to highlight is calling up, not out. You know, I had a conversation with a leader who's new to a leadership role, stepping into leadership for one of the first times. And we had the conversation that I had with our director of marketing years ago that we realized we have a leadership code. We have a way that we are going about leading in our day-to-day based on what we've seen work poorly. And this leader said exactly the same thing. He said, I cannot imagine doing or saying or acting the way that I have seen leaders act towards me. I can't imagine ever doing that. Thankfully for this leader, it's not a copy-paste in terms of his behaviors as a leader. He instead is discerning, reacting, and responding in a new way. And one of the most challenging situations for this leader was when his previous leaders would call him out. They were against him. They were fighting for themselves. They were fighting for their own status, for their own position, hiding the current reality, hiding their perceived weakness, what they thought to be weakness. And instead of celebrating and elevating someone else, fighting for their highest possible good, they were stuck in a rut of fighting for themselves. And so when this leader or anyone else coming up through the ranks did something that someone in leadership had a problem with, they called them out. They poured on the challenge. They heaped on the challenge. And they said, why would you do this? You're not supposed to do this. I told you not to do this. How could you ever do this? And that kind of calling out pushes people down. It does not fight for them. It fights against them. Fights for preserving your own sense of self. It's a mindset that we tend to think we have to prove ourselves. We have to hide our weakness. We have to overcome them. Rather than celebrating the achievement, the accomplishment, the possibility of someone else and recognizing we are better together. Rather than calling someone out when they mess up, consider calling them up. Consider how they could grow through this opportunity. Consider how they could learn something. Again, as we talked about, we want them to know and understand the tendencies and patterns that are undermining their influence. If we can fight for them and get them to the next level, they will lead like never before. We'll be right back. Do you know most teams function at less than 60% of their true potential? How much does this cost your business every year? For every team within your business, it's at least $200,000 in lost revenue. How do you solve this challenge? With Invincible Teams, you can. Measuring the five key building blocks of high-performing teams, we immediately know where to start to take your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com IBGR. 
After working with some of the largest organizations in the world and thousands of small businesses in 116 different countries, we realize that all organizations share one thing in common. They all want to unlock the potential of people. They want everyone to be productive and empowered. They want their teams to perform at the highest levels while creating an amazing culture. They want to impact the lives of their customers. At Giant, we want what you want. We've discovered the science behind unlocking people, and that's why world-class brands trust us. We unlock organizations by implementing the Invincible Operating System. The Invincible Operating System begins with an assessment, so we can understand the current reality of your teams and where the growth opportunities are. Then we use our toolkit to go beyond teaching to true transformation. Our tools are memorable, practical, and profound. Lastly, we follow a process that allows us to effectively touch everyone in the organization with the right experience at the right time, so everyone from key leaders to team members can be fully unlocked. Are you ready to take your organization to the next level? Are you ready to become invincible? Most teams function at less than 60% of their potential, which costs you in lost revenue. The Invincible Teams Assessment tracks the five factors of Invincible Teams and takes your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR. Welcome back to the New Generation Leader on IBGR. IBGR is our call sign as a radio station, but we are more than a radio station. We are a network. And I want to invite you to go to your favorite app store and download the IBGR app. Jump into the community, be part of the conversation, and add your voice to what's going on as we connect business leaders, entrepreneurs from around the world right here through IBGR. Today on The New Generation Leader, we are talking about rewriting leadership. And as I mentioned at the outset, I got an incredible package today. Uh, FedEx just dropped this at the door before the show started. This is the first draft copy from the printer of The New Generation Leader book. And I will be cracking that open with my family later on today, celebrating. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I can feel in the package what the book feels like. I can't wait to crack this open and see what it looks like and approve this so it can get into the hands of readers and change our mindset. Give us a framework to understand how to rewrite our own leadership, have the tools that we need to become the leaders the digital world needs us to be. So here in this segment today, I want to share with you chapter one of the book. So consider this a story time with Aaron, and I'm going to read chapter one for you. Rewriting leadership. My first promotion lasted two weeks. My supervisor identified a new management leadership role I could fill on the team and promoted me. My team was small, but I became the team's leader. This new team included an up-and-coming team member, and I understood the challenges this team member was facing. We had worked together for almost a year, and I was ready to impart some wisdom and, and get this train back on track. We had a big project coming to life the next week, and we poured all of our energy into this effort. I gave it my all. The project was a success, but it was far from easy. While it was full of challenges, we had incredible wins. The next week, I came back ready to dive into leading my new team beyond this significant project. Riding the high of our experience and perhaps still exhausted from the long hours, I was ready to dive into the next challenge. 
My supervisor sat me down, held a piece of paper in his hands with a list of everything I had done wrong in the previous week and rescinded the promotion. I was right back to where we had started. I was crushed. Time and time again, we find leaders making promotions and filling a new role on their team without providing the training, experience, or feedback to get this new leader on the right track. The problem comes in every industry and at every level, from middle management to executive leadership. We promote new leaders without equipping them to succeed. In this case, I needed to fail forward. I needed to learn from the challenges and build a foundation for the future. Instead, I was not even permitted the opportunity to fail, period. Studying leadership and practicing leadership are two different disciplines. Schools now have leadership programs, including one that turned me down. For all the leadership books we could read, our real growth comes from our experiences. The classroom in real life cannot provide the same level of leadership experience. Usually, leadership development looks like this in an organization. We identify, we promote, and then we equip. Organizations identify the best new candidate for leadership, someone ripe with opportunity and showing particular promise. Often it's one of their top performers. These new leaders are elevated to a new role which comes loaded with expectations from not only their leaders, but also from those they lead. Their team members expect perfection from the outset, while the new leader has no foundation to stand on. Leaders are set up for disappointment from the beginning because they are unprepared. What if we could rewrite the script on leadership? What if leaders could be developed and cultivated to be confident and secure on their first day as a leader? The new generation leader development process moves from just-in-time training amid the chaos of leadership to identify, equip, promote. When we equip new generation leaders with the tools they need before they step into the role, their impact and influence on their team are multiplied out of the gate. They begin to lead others to their true potential instead of compensating for learning as they go. Are they fully prepared before they step into the new role? No, but the different comes, difference comes when they are equipped with the necessary tools to continue learning and growing on the job. They have enough know-how to succeed from day one and enough humility to never stop the journey of self-discovery. So I invite you as a leader to consider who's an up and coming leader you can begin to invest in now before you need them to step into an official leadership capacity and start, start setting some time on your calendar. This is one of the great ways we can intentionally invest in the lives of those we lead fighting for their highest possible good by preparing them before we need them to be leaders. One of my friends and, and colleagues and I talk about this often. And, and as he works with businesses and clients, and as I'm interacting with teams, one of the conversations that he's helped me realize we need to have with leaders is what roles do you think you will need going forward? And sketch that out. What does next year look like? two years from now, five years from now? And what investment do you need to start making today so you can be successful at that point going forward? Now, there are so many people on our teams who have such great potential and we can invest in them. We can fight for their highest possible good. And maybe they turn out to be those leaders that we need at the next level. Maybe we have to go outside to find them. But if we can take a look at who's around us, begin to sketch out the future of what we're going to need from leaders, then perhaps, perhaps we will be ready to take our business to the next level when our business is ready to function at the next level. Well, I want us to look at one other conversation today. And as we look at the toolkit and begin to put together how we can envision what's going on in our business, let's get some clarity on our organization. 
Now, next week on The New Generation Leader, we're going to talk about developing clarity on quality. But to develop clarity on quality, we first have to have clarity on the business, on the organization itself. And here's the challenge. The challenge is so with our day-to-day tactics. What do we do every day? And sometimes, especially in the early phases of our business, we can get stuck in those day-to-day tasks. We're working in the business instead of on it, as many often say. That is what we need our employees to know and what we'll focus on next week. But let's flip to the other end of the organization. When we're looking at leadership, are the roles and responsibilities of our leaders clear? And we'll, we'll talk about this next week too, but you define the culture of the business, but everyone else who has a leadership role in the business also influences the culture. Leaders define culture, but sub-leaders define subculture. So we have leadership. Are the roles and responsibilities clear? Have we delegated? Have we raised up the next level leaders that we need to fill roles at other levels of the organization? That is fighting for our team members. Fighting for ourselves calling people out, being focused on me as the leader, would say, how many of these roles can I keep? But fighting for our team and multiplying ourselves looks at that question from another angle. How many of these tasks and roles and responsibilities can I delegate? How many of these can I hand off? How many of these can I empower someone else on the team to take? Then we look at vision and values. Do we know where we're going? Is it clear what we are trying to do, the difference we are trying to make in the world? And do people know and live our values? Are they clear? Do they understand them? We'll talk even more about the value of quality uh, next week on the show. Then we talk about strategy, the initiatives, the pathways, the growth opportunities that we're going to take. And then we get into culture and structure. How are we actually organized? But none of that truly matters unless we have zoomed out at a a very high level and taken a look at our own leadership mindset, our own leadership perspective. What kind of leader do I want to be? Am I for myself? solely for what I can gain out of this? Or am I multiplying myself? Am I investing in people who I lead so that they are multiplied, so that they can reach their potential, they can find opportunities and passions that drive them and motivate them? Maybe those fall right in line with our business. Maybe they don't. But if we don't invest in our people, we will never find out about their passion and their drive. Then we get into the tactics and really take a hard look at what what we need to be doing day by day in the business. But as we head towards the close of the year, as we wrap up 2020 and look to a new year, it's a great marker to take a fresh look, to have a a clean slate. Say, okay, I'm going to work on the business. I'm going to get ready to kick off a new year with a bang and rewrite my script on leadership. We'll be right back. Do you know most teams function at less than 60% of their true potential? How much does this cost your business every year? For every team within your business, it's at least $200,000 in lost revenue. How do you solve this challenge? With Invincible Teams, you can. Measuring the five key building blocks of high-performing teams, we immediately know where to start to take your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com IBGR. 
After working with some of the largest organizations in the world and thousands of small businesses in 116 different countries, we realize that all organizations share one thing in common. They all want to unlock the potential of people. They want everyone to be productive and empowered. They want their teams to perform at the highest levels while creating an amazing culture. They want to impact the lives of their customers. At Giant, we want what you want. We discovered the science behind unlocking people, and that's why world-class brands trust us. We unlock organizations by implementing the Invincible Operating System. The Invincible Operating System begins with an assessment, so we can understand the current reality of your teams and where the growth opportunities are. Then we use our toolkit to go beyond teaching to true transformation. Our tools are memorable, practical, and profound. Lastly, we follow a process that allows us to effectively touch everyone in the organization with the right experience at the right time, so everyone from key leaders to team members can be fully unlocked. Are you ready to take your organization to the next level? Are you ready to become invincible? Most teams function at less than 60% of their potential, which costs you in lost revenue. The Invincible Teams Assessment tracks the five factors of Invincible Teams and takes your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR. Hey, welcome back to the New Generation Leader on IBGR. This is our fourth and final segment today. And if you missed any of our segments today, go back, download the app or visit IBGR.network. You can catch up on each segment of every show, uh, any of our shows. All of those are available. You can even find the New Generation Leader on your favorite podcast platform, including Amazon and iTunes. So if you find it there, leave a review, give some feedback, help someone else stumble across the podcast and listen in on the tools that we are building throughout this season to help you become the kind of leader the digital world needs you to be. We are live today across North America. And coming up next, there's another great show coming hour by hour all afternoon here on IBGR. So stay tuned and jump into the conversation. Uh, if you have a question, there's a big blinking question mark on IBGR.network, or you can drop us a message at IBGR Network. Or use the hashtag new generation leader in a social media post. Jump into the conversation and let's see how we can support each other here in the community. We say we're not just a radio station. We are a network and we want to support each other as we grow our businesses. So I want to ask you a question. What is it like on the other side of you? One of my first supervisors asked that question. And that's now a question that I ask teams, uh, leaders frequently. What is it like to be on the other side of you? Because we all come into situations thinking that we know how we act. We know what it's like to interact with us. We know what it's like to respond to our communication because we all have this tendency to look at any situation, any communication 
as though everyone else is thinking just like we are. But in reality, that's not what it's like. Not everyone else sees the world the same way you do. You want to put numbers on that. One of the eye-opening things for me to realize was I've always been very competitive. In fact, I just found a draft a little while ago of a, an article, a blog post, keynote that I started writing an outline for. And I started with the story of getting a technical foul in high school basketball. I only got a technical once. I never got thrown out of a, a basketball game or a baseball game, though I also remember throwing my helmet down so hard in high school baseball that my dad would have to walk down to the dugout and encourage me to calm down. The coaches hadn't seen it. They missed it. But my dad had not missed that. Well, I got a technical foul because I was so competitive. That drive for competition, for winning on what was admittedly one of the worst teams you have ever seen, I still had that drive. I still had that push. I wanted to win. What I realize now, looking back, giving numbers and perspective to that, is I'm part of 7% of the population that want to win that badly. And if we truly want to rewrite leadership, we have to understand how we are wired, what our tendencies are, so that we can bring our best. We can bring a healthy perspective that gives us an opportunity to bring out the best of other people. But in order for us to bring out the best, to fight for the highest possible good of those we lead, we have to look beyond ourselves. We have to look beyond our habits and our rhythms. We have to look beyond what we expect in any given situation. We have to put ourselves in the shoes and gain some insight into what it's like to be on the other side of me. So what is it like? Do you tend to be more reactive to situations or do you build and develop and work proactively to invest in your team and in your business and in the processes and vision and everything that you need to build your business? Reactive or proactive? Then are you accidental? Do you see things as they come? Are you very flexible? Do you respond to situations as they come up or are you intentional? Scheduling that time, we talked about this a few weeks ago, that our intentional time investment is really important for us to set aside that time, schedule that time to build a solid foundation of intentionality, of multiplying ourselves into our people. Then are we being inconsistent? Do we do it when we feel like it when we have a free moment or are we be developing a rhythm and a system of consistency. And if we build this system of consistency, we get to a point in our leadership where we are constantly iterating. We are constantly building and working on the team, the system, the process, the business, and building it to be the best that it can be, helping activate, awaken the talents, the mission, the drive, the abilities within every one of our team members to grow this business into more than we could have ever asked or imagined. But it takes being proactive, it takes being intentional, it takes being consistent, and it takes us having a clear understanding of what it's like to be on the other side of me. So I invite you to ask yourself that. What is it like to be on the other side of me? And here's another level to that. I 
we have circles of influence. We have our own leadership that we have influence over. We have our business and a level of influence over that circle. We also have a team that we lead. And how we show up to our team is even different than how we show up to our business as a whole. But there's another layer in there. This is what I refer to as our inner circle. These are the people who are closest to us, most influential to us. This is your family, your friends, your roommates, those people who day by day, side by side, you are collaborating, connecting, working together on how to become better, how to push each other to be better. And one of the realities that we often miss and lose sight of is that that inner circle can have a powerful influence on how we show up day by day. It's also a powerful center of influence for us to invest in and maintain. We can have this imbalance or a, a conflict arise because we're struggling to fully, completely invest in ourselves and in our inner circle and in the team of those we lead and in the organization as a whole, and even in the fifth circle of our community engagement, how we invest in our, our wider community. We need to look at how we show up at each of those levels because each one of those circles influences the other. How I lead myself is a, an internal head game for me, if I'm being really honest. I could play lots of mind games and beat myself up when I, I miss the mark. Or I can work to build a new habit and a new rhythm. I can do the same thing with my wife and my kids. They're the ones who I would say are uh, most closely in my inner circle. And the interactions that I have with them in the morning or in the evening powerfully influence the rest of my day, how I go to sleep and prepare for the next morning. And those interactions then play out into team and organization. And the reverse is also true. How our team and organization experience us during the day influences the energy passion, the drive, the intentionality that we have when we come back home. So as we continue through this holiday season, what I love about these six weeks or so is that from Thanksgiving through New Year's, we have a number of holiday opportunities. We take a, a collective pause across much of North America and there's at least a change of pace. Some businesses may be more hectic in this stretch, and then a pause comes. But many of us have the opportunity to hit pause, to reflect, to regroup. And so I hope that you will do that. As we, you consider rewriting your leadership, what does it look like for you to rewrite leadership in every circle of your influence? I invite you to come back next week as we talk about developing clarity on quality. We'll spend the first three segments on that, but we're going to close out next week talking about 2021, what your outlook is for the new year, and how to become the leader you need to be in the new year. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time on IBGR. Hey, thanks for listening to today's live stream, watching online on IBGR, on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Thanks for watching wherever you've been watching today's live stream. And I don't know what you're up to for the rest of the day, but I'm going to go crack open this package, see the first printed copy of the new generation leader, and hopefully approve this printing.
so we can get it into your hands real soon. I hope you have a great week, and we'll catch you next week, 1 p.m. Eastern, and live streamed across LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook here on the New Generation Leader on IBGR.